Good evening everyone, Feet here. As you can see, I just woke up from hibernation and I haven't been in front of a camera in a while. So I thought I would warm up by making a video. This one is suggested by viewer Alice on YouTube. Shout out to Alice. And Alice thought that I should make a video about fame items. And I thought to myself, right, isn't half of the post on the Battle Bros subreddit is about whether or not a bro is good and the other half is about whether or not a weapon is good and I think I can answer one of those questions today and so I will so this video is gonna be about how to know if your weapon is good or not and how to choose the best fame items for your build all right before I go into more details there is a one general rule in battle bros when doing damage to an armored enemies that is a single big hit is better than multiple smaller hits that's because the sp damage that you deal will be blocked by 10 percent of enemies current remaining armor take a look at uh, this example let's say we had we, they got 161 armor left then whatever damage that we do, we block by 10% of that, which is 16. So if you're doing 20 damage per hit, then most of your damage will be blocked. But if you hit them hard for say 50, then you can push more damage through. For more information, please refer to this very comprehensive guide about damage written by Villain Joe. All right. My smooth brain can only explain to you so much, right? There's a lot more going on over here. Read them up if you want to really understand how the damage works so you can choose the best uh, weapon for your build, all right? So let's take a look at our fame weapons over here. Yeah, they got uh, durability, base damage, armor pain, armor damage, shield damage, Headshot chance, they weight, f fatigue reduction. So each fame item is gonna get two modification to all of these stats. And the main one we care about are the base damage, the armor pain, and the armor damage. All right. Durability we don't care too much about. Most weapons don't break during of the fight. Shield damage we don't care about because cracking shield is oftentimes the wrong move headshot chance is actually terrible because you want to focus your damage on one body part right if you focus damage on both head and body you have to go through two pieces of armor instead of one uh max uh, the weight is not really that important because it's just a few points of fatigue um way better than weight is a re fatigue reduction per hit for weapons that hit multiple times per turn this can save you a lot of fatigue. And between the three main stats, right? Base damage, armor pain, and armor damage. Armor damage is the least important one because you don't need to completely destroy enemies' armor to kill them. Armor pain exists for a reason, and that is to ignore some of the armor. And I find that below about 150 armor, most weapon can 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 push damage through really well and by that i mean it can push maybe let's say above 15 damage through it's above 15 damage through you start doing morale checks and maybe even injuries right so big weapons can go can can start ignoring armor once it's once it go down to maybe 200 250 but um most do this build most 200 build should be able to comfortably go through 150 armor so that's why you don't need to completely destroy the armor you only need to get the armor down to maybe 200 150 and it's not that hard to do all right so armor damage not super important also once the armor let's say is completely destroyed your armor pain and your armor damage becomes worthless and if you're fighting an enemy that has no armor let's say a big uh, unhold then the only thing that's gonna matter is your base damage 
and also higher base damage translate to more damage that can penetrate armor and more armor damage anyways so base damage is something that we always want on our flame weapon and because we can only choose two modification for our weapon the second best stat for dealing damage is going to be armor pen the third best at least for 100 weapon that hit multiple times per turn is going to be reduced fatigue cost all right the fourth best is going to be armor damage the fatigue reduction for 200 weapons is not as good because they don't hit at that many times per turn but it lets you use the weapon without mastery basically so weapon mastery right usually it costs 15 fatigue to hit them with a the primary attack with mastery it goes down to uh, 12 so if you find a weapon with minus 3 per turn then you know it goes down to 12 so you can use a 200 weapon without mastery if you want all right let's start going through the weapons one by one the one hand axe is very standard you want base damage you want armor pen then comes fatigue cost and armor damage for the Rock Axe, however, because it costs so much more fatigue to use, you might prefer the fatigue cost a bit more so that you can use it in the first place. So I would go for base damage, fatigue reduction, then armor pain, then armor damage. The whip, however, because the base damage is so low, you would never be able to push any damage through armor anyways. So armor pain and armor damage on this thing is quite worthless. You oftentimes will use this to disarm so the fatigue cost is better. Uh, whip can still do good damage to unarmed enemies though, so base damage, fatigue cost is second best. Uh, then comes armor pen. Well, if you have a whip with base damage and armor pen, you can build a whip duelist. Basically a cleaver duelist with a whip in the pocket, and then you can whip goblins from afar. Goblin has very low armor, so whip duelist can get through, hit them once, maybe deal 20 damage, and the, the 20 remaining HP is gonna be the bleed will take care of that so yeah whip do this for goblins but most of the time i go for hp damage and fatigue reduction for the one hand cleaver it's um base damage armor pen fatigue reduction uh, armor damage same with the copage right the orc a cleaver is the same as the orc axe you want base damage first and then you want maybe fatigue reduction so you can use it in the first place for the daggers, right, for the rondel dagger, because you can completely ignore armor with puncture, you don't need armor pain or armor damage. You want base damage for huge punctures, and you want reduce uh, fatigue cost so that you can stab them more times. Next is the Qatar dagger. For this dagger, you want base damage, armor pain for maximum damage. However, um, fatigue reduction is also very good because uh, with a dagger with high fatigue reduction, you can stab forever without even losing fatigue you actually would gain fatigue each turn if you find a dagger with minus three fatigue per turn all right next up is a one hand fame flail um yeah this is not a, the best weapon in the world but you would still want base damage and armor pain all right for maximum uh, damage output for the three headed flail okay this one has very high base damage it's actually had the highest max base damage out of all the 100 weapon but that damage is split into three parts so each hit is very weak so no matter how much armor pen you get no matter if you give them duelist perk it's not gonna be that great so i actually prefer armor damage to armor pen for this weapon because with that high base damage and with high armor damage you can stretch the armor faster and once the armor is down to low you can start dealing damage so for the flail i would go base damage armor damage and then maybe fatigue reduction and then armor pen and don't get me wrong if you find a increased damage increased armor pen on a threaded flail you would still be able to destroy raiders with maybe 100 armor or less but i think with 200 armor you're not going to be able to scratch um to, 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 to touch the HP. You would have to scratch through a lot of armor before you can uh, start dealing damage to them. Next is the one-handed hammer. Likely the worst weapon in the game because it has the lowest base damage and it has extremely high armor damage. To make up for that, 
to just destroy armor. Right? I would much prefer a weapon with higher base damage and less armor damage. Right? With something like that, I would still do about, um, uh, the same amount of armor damage. But once the army is gone, I can start dealing good damage to their HP. For the hammer, yeah, sure, you can do a lot of armor damage. But once the army is gone, yo, you have a terrible weapon to deal with pure uh, HP. So for the uh, one hammer, you would want to just destroy one armor and then move on to another armor. You don't want to touch raw HP with this. Yeah, base damage, I'm a pain for this, right? And then fatigue reduction if you want to use this weapon. The next is the one hand mace. One hand mace I find to have a really balanced amount of damage, armor pain, and armor damage. Increased damage and armor pain will still be the best for killing enemies. But if you want a mace for your stunner, find them a mace with reduced fatigue cost so that they can stun more. Alright, next is the Goblin Spear. So, Goblin Spear, you don't really use it for the damage. It has really low base damage. So, Armor Pen is not as important here. Um, you kind of use it as a poking stick for your tank because it costs the least fatigue, right? So, yeah, I would still go for damage and maybe even armor damage because when you're dealing with this little damage nothing's gonna go through armor anyway so right, might as well destroy more armor uh, while you're at it so yeah uh, damage armor damage for the normal spear though it has better damage and i like spear duelist sometimes spear walling and breaking enemy morale but it's pretty good so damage armor pain for the normal spear but goblin sword um i st would still go for damage armor pain it has enough damage to get through the armor so damage armor pain is gonna help uh, for the facing sword, all right. This is interesting because when you do the lunge skill, right, most of the damage from that is, comes from your initiative. It's a fixed amount coming from your initiative, so that damage will benefit the most from the armor pain. So armor pain is the most important for facing sword. Um, but sometimes you can also attack normally with with the facing sword, so base damage will still be good. So base damage, um, I mean armor pain is first for the sword and then comes base damage, then comes fatigue cost. Uh, this sword is very fatigue intensive, so you find a sword with uh, reduced fatigue cost. Um, yeah, it's gonna let you fence more, which is great. Um, Sham Shear and Straight Sword, right? Very similar, base damage, armor pain, okay? Moving on to 200 weapons. So, because 200 weapons has a pretty high base damage. And when you do the primary attack from 200 weapons, say the Great Axe, the 2 hand, not the Great Axe, but the 2 hand mace, 2 hand hammer, when you do the primary weapon, it actually deal extra 20 damage. 2 hand flails too. So, the base damage is really high on this. The Great Axe the base damage is also very high because it's uh, it deals another instance of 50 percent of your damage to the other body part that you did not hit with the primary hit so those four are the four hardest hitting single target 200 weapon uh, when you hit that hard right any amount of armor pain is gonna be great of course you will still want base damage armor pain for the maximum damage penetration um, the higher those two stats are, the more like you, you are gonna one-shot something. Alright, so let's go through them. Um, Bardish, Great Axe, and Barbarian Axe. They have some different stats, but you know, you always base damage, armor damage. The best one for, uh, for um, single target damage though is gonna be the Barbarian Axe, even though that it has the lowest base damage. But the Axe already has enough base damage, so the in the 10% increase in the armor pen is gonna be is, is gonna be a lot more deadly. The Bardish has a lower armor damage, a bit lower base damage compared to the Great Axe, but it has the flexibility to split enemy from the backline. And the Great Axe is the best for unarmored enemies because it has the highest base damage out of out of all of these. 
But against anything with medium or high armor, I would still go for the Barbarian Axe. Next is the Long Axe. Long Axe is the highest base damage 2 tile weapon in the game, but it has kind of low armor pain and armor damage. If you want to do damage, you still go for base damage, armor pain. But if you have an, a Long Axe with increased shield damage, uh, with something like that, um, any bro with no melee skill, no sh axe mastery can still split strat shield in a single hit. So uh, if I see a long axe with improved shield damage, I will still go for it. Next up are the three tuned cleavers. Now these don't have the extra damage from the primary hit like the two hand mace, two hand hammer. Here let me show you. So this mace right, it has 95 to 120 damage. When I hit them with the cutthroat skill, it suddenly has 139 to 169 now. That's because I got huge drunkard too, but hey, let's give it to someone without those traits, right? So this will deal 115 to 140. Yeah, but bonus 20, right? So it has bonus 20 damage from the primary hits. So the cleavers don't have that, but uh, they, they can hit twice per turn, all right? So they're gonna do more single target damage. The weakness is that it has less armor pen. It hits it it hits uh, multiple times, but less armor pen and less hard. But it still hit hard enough to trigger, you know, morale checks, trigger injuries, trigger bleed, and it can decapitate for devastating damage. That's why I think two hand cleavers are one of the best weapons in the game. So for two hand cleavers you would still want uh, base damage, armor pen and um, fatigue cost is a close third because well, the cleaver hit two times, maybe thri three times per turn so you want to save a lot of fatigue with this thing and between the cleavers, the barbarian cleaver is the best even though it has the lower base damage compared to the normal southern cleaver it has 10% more armor pain. And when you have this much base damage, reaching to 50% armor pain is incredible. Otherwise, um, you know, uh, the Southern City Cleaver is the best against unarmored because it has the most base damage. And the Undead Cleaver is the worst because, well, it has the low lower base damage low armor pain, high armor damage. Armor damage is the least important one, especially for a cleaver, all right? All right, moving on to the two-handed flail. Two-handed flail has a wide range of damage, so the damage is very inconsistent. Also, uh, it hits the head more often than other weapons. Also, the difference between a headshot and a body shot is huge on this weapon because... Um... Here, check this one out. Uh, this one has high damage and head touch chance, so it's a really good one. And the flail mastery, right? Let's you ignore 10% more armor on headshots. So, and don't forget this thing will deal 20 more damage than normal when you use the primary hit, right? 50 to 111 becomes what the? Yeah, let's not use this guy. He has huge drawn card. It's so unfair. Alright, so 55 to 111 turns to 75 to 131. So yeah, extra 20, uh, 20 da base damage. And also it has 10% more armor pain when you hit the head. So you really want to hit the head with the with the 200 flail. Um, so you, you want base damage and headshot chance. Base damage and armor pain will still be decent. Will still be good, alright. But body shot aren't that impressive even with a good 200 flail. But headshot is very good, even for a mediocre 2 hand flail. All right, so you want to headshot. For the pole hammer, it's not my favorite weapon because it's fall into the category of too much armor damage and not enough base damage. You want uh, base damage, armor pen. I have seen something like that one shot legionaries before, and if you mash them up, you can even one shot honor guards. For the two hand hammer, all right, this thing has enough armor pen and armor damage already. Honestly, you don't need them. All you want from this is increased base damage. Whatever the other stats are fine, 
uh, armor paint will still be the best, but hey, I don't, uh, if I don't have that, I, I won't, you know, be too upset. The barbarian hammer is way worse than the two hand hammer because it has way less base damage. Base damage, armor paint you can, but I would reroll the champion if I can. Alright, if I see one, if I see a hammer, I would try to reroll it. So the pole mace like the pole hammer, you want base damage and armor pen. For the two hand mace, right? This thing is actually the most one shot sick weapon in the game because it has the highest base damage. Plus it has a 20 extra damage when you do the primary primary hit. And it has higher armor pen compared to the great axe. And all that damage is focused on one single body part, unlike the great axe that hit both head and body. The Barbarian Spike Mai is a lot worse than the Two Hand Mai. It has way lower base damage. It has 10% more armor pain, but armor pain doesn't matter that much when it gets above, say, 50%. And it means nothing when you sacrifice base damage. So, Barbarian Champions, right? They got four weapons. Cleaver, Axe, Mace, Hammer. If I see the Mace and Hammer, I would try to reroll into either the Cleaver or the Axe. Uh, next is the Bill Hook, right? Base damage, armor pen for max damage output. Same with the Pike, same with the Goblin Pike, same with the normal Pike. Same with the Sword Lance. For the worst side though, worst side is actually a bit better than Sword Lance. It sacrificed a tiny bit of base damage, but improved a lot in the armor damage category. Thing is, for the worst side, you need to make sure that your worst side has decent durability. You know, it's a multi-hit weapon and, and every time you hit armor, you lose 3 durability. If you rip us, Three things in a turn, you want to lose 9 durability. And if your warside has only 30 durability, it's not going to be very function functional. Next up is the Spatum uh, um, base damage and armor pain for maximum damage when you hit and when you spear wall. Alright, next up is the Great Sword, right? I don't like Great Sword that much anymore, but it does benefit from extra damage when you uh, do the primary attack. Grace Sword suffer from low armor pain though for a high base damage weapon. So you really want that extra armor pain to balance it out. I have seen a Fame Grace Sword with armor pain and base damage. One shot legionaries with the AoE uh, skill before. So you can one shot three legionaries in a go, in one go, or you know, you can split uh, the pikemen from the bike in one go. If you find a sword with base damage and armor pain all right for the war brand yeah base damage armor pain but honestly war brand is uh, a lot worse compared to say a sword duelist a sword duelist would deal way better against armor war brand if you find a high damage one is better against unarmored enemies but i why be a war brand bro when you can just go a great axe bro you know you can deal with armor and unarmor uh, way better all right moving on to range weapons all right range weapon can have extra accuracy for bows, crossbow, and guns. And I think javelins too. Right. And javelins and, and throwing axe can have extra ammo. So for bows, I find that I don't often shoot things that are hard to kill. Right. I can kill them with just a normal bows. Pretty well. So thing is they are a lot more hard to hit. Think of goblin archers, goblin shamans, hexen, things like that. So for bow, I actually prioritize extra hit chance the most so i would go extra hit chance into base damage into armor pain all right same with crossbow um crossbow right it's another one of those weapons when you ex that that can exceed the, the 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 boundaries of a crossbow so you find a crossbow with extra damage and extra armor pain couple that with the extra 25 percent armor pain from crossbow mastery you have a weapon that has 90 armor pain 90% armor pain, yep. Something like that. I have seen something like that. One shot legionary from range before, and that's hilarious. And for the guns, right? For guns, guns don't really one shot anything. And you are shooting things from pretty up close, so you don't need the accuracy that much. I would go for damage and armor damage, actually. So I can destroy more armor from a group of enemies. My other bro is gonna have a better time murdering them afterwards. But Armor pain wouldn't be bad at all when you're going gun, especially when you're going gun, going gun with things like fearsome, 
and next up is the javelins and the throwing axe right by damage armor pen is the best you don't need accuracy for throwing weapon because they are pretty accurate already and also extra ammo is really good too yeah i think armor pen accuracy and extra ammo tie for the second place armor damage is third place all right moving on to armor all right armor is gonna be more simple there are three types of armor light armor medium armor heavy armor light armors are for nimble brows medium armors are for nimble force brows and heavy armor are for battle force brows okay so best nimble armor is the name noble mail if you find something with minus 200 with 200 durability and minus 8 fatigue always buy it okay it's the best possible nimble armor you can find the other three are as good i wouldn't buy them for medium armor, you have the skull chain armor, the black gold armor, the halberd armor, and the lingram armor. Uh, the black and gold is the best, but uh, the male halberd is the close second. Lingram armor you can only find from events, so you know, don't care about that too much. Yeah, if you find something like 262 minus 16, that that's like the best there is. Um, and for heavy armor, you can have every way from somewhat light heavy armor minus 300 minus i mean 300 durability minus 19 all the way to minus uh, to 400 durability minus 33 you know uh if your battle force bro likes fatigue give them some lighter ones if they have the fatigue to wear it go for the heaviest one okay for a helmet um the wolf helmet is the best light helmet for your archers because it has no vision penalty but a bit more durability won't matter that much Alright, so your frontline nimble brow can wear the Ross helmet, it's alright. For medium brows, right, they can wear the stepper helmet, the skull helmet. I say the horn helmet is already a bit heavy for a medium brow. And um, yeah, for helmets, you can actually wear uh, the horn helmet even for battle force brow if they are lacking a lot of fatigue because headshots seem scary but you don't get headshot that often and if you have steel brow you can afford to wear some lighter helmet to have more fatigue to use that would be okay too so if you have the fatigue go over the heavier ones if you don't have the fatigue go over the lighter one all right also for your nimble dodge brow throw some uh, hyena clock in there to get more dodge for your nimble force brow throw crock and place in there it, it costs no weight and it reduce your damage it reduce damage taken and for battle force you can go for um part for padding is gonna give you the most protection all right and uh going back for the fame shield or should i say the lame shield all right for shield um they aren't that impactful right your tank can use a normal shield just fine but if you find fame shield, try to look for shield with reduced fatigue per shield wall. Because it allows your bro to shield wall every single turn without fail. If they got, let's say if you find a shield with minus 2 or minus 3 fatigue per shield wall. And you have a, an iron lung tank, right? You can shield wall every turn. Because shield wall costs 20. If it has minus 2, right? It becomes 18. If your if your bro has and lung is 15 plus 3 fatigue recovery, that's also 18. So they, they can shoot wall every single turn with only 18 fatigue. Okay. And if you find a shield with minus one fatigue only, then shield wall would cost 19. Then any bro can take potion and shield wall that forever. So potion is plus four fatigue, right? So 15 plus 4 is 19, shield is 20 minus 1 is also 19. So if you find a shield with reduced fatigue uh, cost, then then you can shield forever. Um, and my favorite shields are the Metal Hitter Shield, the Golden Brown Shield, and the Super Shield because they have high defense and high durability. Um, if you are going up against Enemy that like to crack shields a lot, then you want to go for the some of the orc shield. It has the most durability. 
um, a the amount of defense, right? Higher the better, but honestly, your tank, right? If they are good, and if they can show forever, should not care about a few extra defense on the shield that much, because, well, they have so much defense, so they get like more than 100 defense. Enemies gonna hit them with 5% anyways. So, yeah. Uh, I forgot a few things, all right? Um, there's a small thing about fatigue reduction with the rounding in Battle Bros. When you take weapon mastery, right, it reduces fatigue cost by 25%. So sometimes when you are when you have a weapon with reduced uh, fatigue, right, let's say a bow, right. Okay, so this guy has bow mastery. I have a normal bow here. Uh, quick shot cost 12, aim shot cost 15. If I have a bow with minus 1, right. Quick shot costs only 11 now, but aim shot still 15 because of the rounding down in this game, right? Uh, yeah, it's like that. If I have a plus, if I have a minus 3 bow, quick shot correctly costs 9, but aim shot costs only 13, it's only minus 2. It's the case for a few weapons, it's not that big of a deal, but no, that's sometimes, right? Minus 1 might be the same as minus 2, and minus 3. Two might be the same as minus three uh, in Battle Bros, all right? So, all right, guys, I haven't streamed in a while. Two months, maybe three. And I still have the trash weapon only run that I got started, but haven't finished yet. I'm going to finish it now, okay? So catch me on Twitch. I will link my Twitch page down below. All right, chaps, stay tuned. Feed out and see.